All right. Hello, class. I'm back. I am going to go over today's lesson for those of you guys who like hearing the auditory version of it and a few things I add in the slides to make sure you fully succeed on the test. Remember, we have our test on Wednesday. I need you to go through today's lesson and tomorrow's lesson to be prepared for the test on Wednesday. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. You should be opening up today's weekly slideshow. And today's lesson is on stress. That is our mental health lesson we're going to be working on this week. So if you guys see my page, when it comes to stress, for your assignment, you're going to label stress. And the do now question, remember, you don't have to write down the question. Just go ahead and answer. What is stress to you? So you guys should have time to answer that question. And then, of course, I teased and tricked my in-class students, giving them a little of what anxiety feels like. They thought they had to dance in front of class and perform a routine until I told them just kidding. But those, those symptoms they were experiencing, those were little tidbits of stress, the flushed face, the rapid heartbeat, the maybe sweating, the a dilated pupils. Those are just a few symptoms of what stress and anxiety feels like. So we pretty much went over like what is stress we all know stress is a natural part of life it happens it's inevitable there might be small stresses like i have on the slide maybe you're running late to class so i get another tardy i i could get in trouble um if i get another absence i might have to take the semester test um, it could be stress that builds up for days you know a big act coming up or maybe it's a big state playoff game there's things that could be built up for days and like i have at the bottom sometimes it can be unavoidable I'm driving to work. I pop my tire with a nail on the road. I can't avoid that. So sometimes it just happens. Um, we talked about when it comes to stress, a lot of times it's the way you perceive things. I put on there an example of an argument. Maybe I got an argument with a friend and I see it as, oh my gosh, it's going to ruin our friendship. It's going to be horrible. And I'm stressing over it. Whereas my friend probably sees it as not a big deal. We'll work through it. It's the way we perceive things sometimes can determine our outcome levels. If you're sitting in ready to take a test and you're just stressing out about it, well, one, if you're not prepared, that might be a reason why you're stressing. But if you're prepared and you're okay, there's no reason to stress about it. Just breathe and let your knowledge take over. Um, we talked about how having experiences can help with stress. Um, obviously, coaching soccer if I have the same skill level players in a playoff game, I might put my upperclassmen over my underclassmen just because they have experience. They've been in a situation like that before. So I always say get out there, get involved, get experiences, because that's like a one up. It helps you guys out in pressure situations. We talked about how stress can be positive or negative. Obviously, you don't want to wait last minute on a lot of things, but sometimes it could be a little positive motivation. You get things done. Um, however, Negative stress can hamper your life. We talked about the number one killer of Americans is heart disease and stress is a huge contributing factor to that. So you might be distracted, overwhelmed. Um, we'll talk about causes headaches. It weakens your immune system, makes your heart work that much harder. So unfortunately, stress can have a negative impact on your physical health. A stressor is anything that, that causes stress. So it could be school. It could be a certain class. It could be I sit with students in my class and man, they, they're chatty Cathy's and I can't focus on my work. It could be imagined stress. Like I said, I'm imagining my friend never wants to talk to me again and that's not really what's gonna happen. It could be anticipated stress, stress that you know your driver's test is coming up, you're, you're waiting for that. Or it could be unexpected. I get a call in the middle of the night that my grandpa's in the hospital. So stressors can be anything. So on this part, I make sure in your guys' notes that you write down some stressors in your life. They could be school stressors. Um, it could be career stressors. Maybe you got a job, stressors at your job, maybe some family stressors. Maybe my parents are arguing and that stresses me out. I mean, whatever stressors are. And then if you have ways right now, how you manage it. So I wanted you to write those down and I look at those. This activity, um, imagine someone sitting under the umbrella and then someone standing next to it. So the umbrella, think of, ways and things you guys can do to handle stress. We'll go over more tomorrow, but for example, maybe taking deep breaths, put that on your umbrella. Um, exercise is actually a great way to handle stress. Maybe I just listen to my music and go for a run, put that on my umbrella. Um, maybe school, if it stresses you out, but I study, I, I go to study groups, I pay attention, I take notes, put that on my umbrella. So the umbrella is pretty much 
things you guys can do to help manage your stress. Now you say, why does this person have an umbrella? It's a sunny day. Well, I'm already prepared. I'm prepared for anything that might happen. Well, you think of the stressors you talked about. School, uh, maybe a test, maybe a certain subject. Maybe you got to get your grades up. If it's a career, can I get a job? Can I find the right job? Maybe it's something with your family. Unfortunately, we know like grief. Maybe it's death. Maybe my pet um, has a, a terminal illness. I mean, it could be anything. And we know stressors can come in all shapes and sizes. So picture these as raindrops. When small stress, like I'm late to school to a big stress, my grandma's in the hospital. It doesn't look good. So if you think of two people, one under the umbrella, one standing with nothing, well, the one under the umbrella is protecting themselves. They have ways to help manage the stress. Not saying they're not getting stress uh, affecting them, but they have ways to manage it. They might get splashed on, right? But when you think of someone with no umbrella, no preparation, no ways to manage it, they're just getting soaked. You guys know the saying, when it rains, it pours, and they are getting drenched. This person is now unable to handle another thing that comes their way. And unfortunately, this could drive someone down the wrong path. All right, when we talk about stress, it comes in three stages. The alarm stage is like the fight or flight. Um, this is where in your guys' brain, okay, this work gets a little scientific, but in your brain, you have something called your hypothalamus. It literally receives danger signals. So if something's stressing you out, you your hypothalamus, ding, 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 has danger signals. When it releases this hormone, it stimulates another guy in your brain called your pituitary gland, which in turn then it stimulates your adrenal glands. Well, if you look at adrenal, what does that sound like? Adrenaline. Adrenaline is the emergency hormone that prepares you for the stressor that's about to face you. So if it's a, I'm telling you, hey, we're going to dance in front of the class today. Your alarm stage was fight or flight and it's going to bing, 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 bing. And it's going to send a lot of adrenaline. It's like your body's rushing with it. Um, I always talk about like true stories. You read articles or hear on the news, like a lady gets in a car accident, her baby's in the back seat, car flips over, mom lifts the car up and gets baby out. And I'm like, there's no way that happens. Well, when mom's in that alarm stage, she's in a fight or flight mode. She's not just going to flee from her baby being stuck in the car. She's going to fight and try to help that baby out. So there are cases where moms are able to pick up cars and get their baby out of that situation. Now, can she last forever? No. That's why the next stage is resistance. Your body can adapt and hang for a little bit, but eventually it's going to go to fatigue mode where you tire out. A lot of people who don't have that umbrella of things to prevent stress, they automatically could start in fatigue mode. It's just like, what else is going to go my way? And it's just pretty much people just face defeat and they let defeat take over. And unfortunately, that's what I'm talking about. Stress can cause a lot of other illnesses to happen. Um, when you're stressed out, these are some physical symptoms you might see. You'll notice to get, you get a lot of headaches, weakened immune system, digestive disorders. You're probably not wanting to eat. Nothing sounds good. High blood pressure. Bruchism is like when you clench your jaw. If you notice you grind your teeth, maybe at nighttime you have a lot of grinding in your teeth. Your dentist might tell you you're wearing down on your enamel. Obviously, in, in your mental, it's hard to concentrate. You might become really irritable. You snap at people real quick. It's just you're really stressed out. You don't have anywhere to release your stress. This is just talking about how you guys can avoid your stress, limit it. Well, if you know you have a big test coming up and your friends want to hang out, maybe just say no. Learn how to say no. Like, no, I got a big test. I don't want to be stressed about it. Plan ahead. Make a schedule. If you have a lot of things on your plate and as you guys get older, I don't want to scare you off, but stress doesn't go away. You might build more stress on because you have more responsibilities. Well, it's learning how to manage it. And one easy way I manage is just plan things ahead. Okay, I got this day to do this, this day to do this. If not, if it all waits to the last day, you're going to be stressed out, right? And sometimes just think positively. If you are planning ahead, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, then just tell yourself, I got this. I can do this. I also gave you guys some tips you could look over for test anxiety. Um, like I told you guys, some stress is unavoidable. Um, maybe you, you're, you go to work and your boss is just extra stressed out. Maybe his business isn't doing so hot. And unfortunately, it could seep over and cause some issues for you. Understand, focus on what you can control on. If it's something you can control, find ways you can manage it. Tomorrow's lesson we're going to be talking about and actually performing a few ways, which we're going to do some relaxation techniques. Um, talking about talking with someone, sometimes just letting it out, maybe writing things down can help release some stress. And of course, the best thing is also redirect your energy. Exercise is the best thing. Do something you like to do. You like to paint? Then go spend 15 minutes and just paint. You want to draw? You want to read? Do something for you. If we don't start taking care of us, our mental health gets affected, which in turn, like I said, affects our physical health. 
And then on this is the last slide. These are four easy things that we've been talking about for the last few weeks. If you do these four things, you're already building that umbrella for stress. So if you're getting enough sleep, you got your umbrella. You're getting enough exercise if you're eating healthy. And then if you learn how to accept defeat and know you guys are going to fail at things. If you tried your best and then you didn't get the job, well, another job will be there. Don't let that hold you back, right? It's learning how to bounce back. Well, if I have my umbrella and I'm not getting enough sleep, there's a hole in it. If I had an umbrella, I'm not getting enough exercise. There's a hole. As you can see, pretty soon I have holes on my umbrella. I'm just holding a stick. What is it helping me? And I'm just getting drenched. So when it comes to stress, understand it happens. It, it's normal. Um, the more responsibilities, you're going to have more stress. Some of you guys might have more stress than others. It's just learning how to handle it. We can't bottle it in. It will take a toll on us. And like I said, eventually it could take a physical toll on the inside, ca causing issues to our organs that we have no idea about. Um, tomorrow's lesson, we're going to talk about ways to manage a stress, but I challenge you guys to spend 10 or 15 minutes a day. Do something that you enjoy doing. Even if it's something that you think is so little, it could be something that you love to do that actually saves you from maybe snapping at someone or having an issue or letting that stress boil over into another activity. And it can actually help you focus and you will start noticing that you're actually going to become a little happier. You're going to feel realize you could actually accomplish a lot more things and be more productive. So I challenge you guys to do something that makes you feel good. So hopefully you guys got a little bit more on the stress PowerPoint that I had presented. Like I said, tomorrow we'll be going over ways to manage it um, until then. Good job. See you later.